it's Ben here and we are back again today doing another video. The subject of today's video is going to be a continuation of the Rise and Fall series. Today I'm going to be examining the Darren Williams, Carlos Boozer era in Utah, which I am going to say lasted from 2005 to 2010. Uh, th those are the years where both guys played for the team and where they were a contender and in the mix to be a pretty effective team and be a consistent playoff threat. So if you haven't seen my Rise and Fall series previously, uh, it's a playlist where I've been highlighting teams throughout history who uh, rose to be a consistent contender. Uh, I highlight how they rose, why they succeeded, how they plateaued, how they ultimately started falling apart. And if you're interested in any of the other videos, go and check those out. But without further ado, we'll get into this one. So the first season we're starting with is the 2005-6 season, which is Darren Williams' rookie year. Uh, t at the top, you'll see top left the team's record for that season, what their seed was, if they made the playoffs. Below that, I'll show their playoff uh, results. Then their offense and defensive rankings that season. And then below, you'll see regular season stats on the left. And if they make the playoffs, you'll see those on the right. For individual stats, I've highlighted games played, minutes played per game, field goal attempts, and field goal percentage. Same with three-pointers, same with free throws, then the same uh, rebounds per game, assists per game, steals per game, blocks, and points. So our first season, Darren Williams' rookie year, the team finished 41-41, and 41, and they actually played a bit better than what their defense and offensive rankings would show. They kind of outplayed themselves. Mamet Okur had about his best season ever, averaging 18 and 9. Um, Carlos Boozer had a pretty solid season, 16 and 9. Same with Karolinko, who I believe led the league in blocks this year with over three per game. Uh, Darren Williams had an okay rookie year, 10, uh, 10, 11 points a game, a little under five assists, and pretty, pretty mediocre role players around them then between Matt Harping, Gordon Garasek. Uh, Jerron Collins and Devin Brown but they had the foundation for a team who could start succeeding 2006 to 7 they brought in Derek Fisher from a trade I believe and the difference with this team is that they also had a rookie uh, Paul Millsap who was a pretty good backup power forward and really the big difference here was that Darren Williams took a big leap um, as you can see, their offense hopped up quite a bit, up to third in the league, uh, largely due to Darren Williams basically playing like an all-star. Uh, Carlos Boozer was an all-star this year and put up his best statistical season, averaging 21 points and 12 rebounds. Uh, Derek Fisher was a pretty decent combo guard addition. His stats weren't that good, but it was more like his leadership and just uh, his presence and like familiarity with the playoffs that I think that helped them most um beyond that Andre Karolinko had another solid season again stats were pretty low but he's also a very big defensive presence so that plays a big part uh Mehmet Okur had another good season with 18 points per game and they actually did really well in the playoffs and probably their their best season in the playoffs since the Carl Malone John Stockton days they got to the Western Conference Finals Largely due to the fact that the Mavericks were knocked out in the first round, so they didn't have to play the one seed. They got to play the eight seed come the second round. But regardless, they did get to the Western Conference Finals, and everybody played relatively well in the playoffs except for Mehmet Okur, who, as you can see, his efficiency dropped below 39% from the field, which is really poor for a center. And he went from averaging 18 points per game in the regular season to about 12 in the postseason, so that really hurt, but... Again, when you're getting guarded by Tim Duncan, uh, I can't blame him for struggling more uh, during the playoffs. But yeah, this is a really solid season, and people were really enthused about what was to come next for this Jazz team as Darren Williams continued to develop. Uh, 2007-8, they actually improved their regular season record and get up to 54 wins. Their offense is best in the league, which was super impressive. Yeah, they had the best offense in the league, and you look at their team up and down, and really it's pretty much the same, except as far as role players go, you sub in Kyle Korver and Ronnie Brewer for Gordon Garasek uh, and Matt Harping. Well, actually, Matt Harping's still there, but 
yeah, they just bring in two nice role players, but pretty similar production from Boozer and Williams. Uh, Williams has one of his better seasons. Same with Boozer. Mehmet Okur and Karolinko provide solid third and fourth options, and then Ronnie Brewer, Millsap, and Corver provide really good uh, like role player options. Come the playoffs, everybody plays fine, and really the reason that they lose the series against the Lakers is just that the Lakers were a better team, and basically the Lakers had Kobe, and he was the best player in the series, and he played really well, and beyond that, they just had a little bit more... Uh, um, a little bit more depth, I would say, as far as you had Lamar Odom, you had Trevor Ariza, you had Andrew Bynum, you had Derek Fisher, and that was just a core that played played uh, played a part in this series. Because when you look at those guys, they they all played pretty well. And it's not that the Jazz played bad; it's just that the Lakers played really well. But again, they got to the second round and you know pushed the Lakers to six games, who were the heavy favorites. So. People still felt good of this Jazz team. 08 to 09, we're really looking at basically the same exact core again, except now you got CJ Miles in the mix as well, another good three-point shooter. Um, but yeah, basically the same exact core. Uh, Paul Millsap gets a lot more time as Car Carlos Boozer missed a lot of time during the regular season. And that's why the, the Jazz were a bit worse this year, down to 48 wins in the eighth seed, is because Carlos Boozer missed... Um, 45 games, which was a, a pretty big blow to this team. And it doesn't seem like a huge amount, but Darren Williams also missed 14 games, which proved to be a bigger deal than people initially would maybe think. Um, come the playoffs, Darren struggled a little bit in the first round, and Ronnie Brewer, who actually had a really good regular season, struggled quite a bit too, getting guarded by Kobe more frequently. Um, and Kyle Korver, who was a really nice bench option also his efficiency dropped off from the field shooting only 39 percent from the field so that really hurt them as well and Mehmet Okur who is their starting center he uh as you can see at the bottom right he shot 17 percent from the field in the playoffs and only scored four points per game so that really shot them in the foot so this was definitely a disappointing season for the Jazz but I think as far as regular season success it just was um impaired by Boozer being out and Williams being out to a lesser extent and so they got a really really tough matchup in the first round that they weren't ready for and also Mamet Okur played terribly and then going into 2009 to 10 um, we had again a very similar core with Williams, Boozer, Brewer, Okur, Karolinko, Millsap basically the only new addition is uh, rookie Wes Matthews who played Pretty well for himself, 48% from the field, a little under 10 points. Again, pretty similar performance from most people. They had everybody healthy for the regular season except for 24 games from Karolinko missed and really about 30 games from Brewer missed. But overall, your main guys like Boozer, Williams, Okur, they had all those guys healthy. And they again played really well, but again just ran into the Lakers in the second round who again were just the better slightly deeper team who had the best player in the series in um, Kobe and you could argue had the second best player in the series in Gasol depending on how good you thought Darren Williams was uh, looking at the playoffs Wes Matthews played pretty poorly shooting under 39 percent from the field everybody else played pretty well it's just that they ran to the Lakers who were really a better team and really if I had to sum up why this Jazz team started plateauing and then after this Boozer left so they ultimately started declining and then they also traded Darren Williams the next season. I would say the reason for their downfall was really a combination of injury problems the season previous to this one and then really they just played in a really tough conference in the west where they, basically every year they were facing a really good Kobe Bryant Lakers team that was just like a little bit better than them every year. And they didn't really have an answer for Kobe. Like, Ronnie Brewer tried his best. Karolinko tried his best. But they still couldn't really contain him. And the Lakers just had a really good supporting cast as well. And they didn't... The Jazz didn't have anything on the Lakers. Like, they didn't have anything that they could take advantage of on the Lakers. So they just never got past them. And unfortunately for them, the way the seeding worked out, they just had to face them year after year. But there you go, guys. That's the story of the Darren Williams, Carlos Boozer, Utah Jazz. I hope you enjoyed the video and continue to check out the rest of the series. 
in the playlist if you're interested, and I will see you next time. Bye.